What's up guys, today we are on our way up to Niagara Falls, New York to uh, pick up the power plant for the next project I'm doing. We are uh, going to pick up a 2008 CBR 1000. That's a, uh, it's a street bike. And I'm not gonna tell you what it's going in just yet, but we're gonna go pick up the bike and uh, get it back to the shop and then we'll go over what the next project is and uh, what our plans are for it. So, gotta uh, stop and uh, fill up with diesel here real quick and then uh, we'll go grab this sucker. So, go boys, let's get it. So we just picked up the bike. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't film it. Um, they didn't really want a camera around their uh, house there. But I got it picked up. So um, like I was saying before, it's a 2008 CBR 1000 double R. And uh, I guess he was running from the cops with it and laid it down. Um, so it's pretty beat up. But I was able to hear it run before I bought it. I also got um, a spare parts motor with it. Um, and it looks like it's going to be a good donor bike. So um, I'm up here in Niagara Falls right now. So I figured I might as well swing by. Um, the waterfall and check it out, see what's going on, and uh, then we'll head back to the shop and get this thing unloaded. Alrighty guys, we just got back to the garage here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get everything unloaded, um, check all the fluids on the bike, make sure everything's good, and uh, we'll start it up, let it run for a little bit. So um, the story on this one, <clears throat> this is actually the original motor. This is a 2008 motor. Um, apparently this one blew up through a rod or something or locked up, I don't remember exactly what he said. Um, so he changed it out and put in a 2011 motor. Um, same thing pretty much and uh got it run again going good and everything and then i guess he was uh running from the cops with it um he said he was doing 134 miles an hour when the chase started and uh he landed in a ditch or something that's pretty much the rest of his history so most of the plastics are gone um the bars are bent stuff like that but it's a good runner um i didn't see any issues when i uh went to buy it so We'll uh, get her out of here, look everything over real nice, and uh, see what we got to work with. So, here we go, boys. <laughs> bike all straightened out here got some uh, fresh gas in it and got some juice to it um, I don't have a battery for it yet but we'll just run jump cables off the truck to hear it run so um, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, see what she does here turn the key on fuel pump cycle second for now the next step will be pulling the motor out and uh, figuring out wiring everything what we're gonna do for 
uh, ECM, if we're gonna stay stock here with Power Commander, if we're gonna do like fuel tech, any of that stuff. So, um, uh, I guess that's pretty much it for that. I'm gonna run up and uh, I'll be in the shop here and show you what this motor is gonna be going in. Um, I think you guys are gonna think it's pretty cool. So we'll, uh, we'll go do that real quick and uh, see what you guys think. All right, guys, up behind the shop now. And uh, here's what that motor is gonna be going in. Golf cart, yes, sir. So uh, the plan with this thing is I'm gonna make a drag racing cart out of it. Um, so actually not much of the golf cart is gonna get used other than the body. Um, so like the front hood part there, the dash. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the rear fenders here because they're pretty beat up. Um, I opted not to use the golf cart frame because I just, I don't think it's gonna be strong enough. Um, number one for the torque of the motor and number two for the speeds um, that this thing's gonna be running. Um, I just don't trust it. So we're gonna make a custom tube chassis for it and everything. And uh, we'll see how she holds up. So I guess we'll uh, flip over time-lapse now, get this thing dragged down to the shop and uh, start tearing it apart, see what we got to work with. guys so i just got all the body and everything ripped off the cart here and this is what she's looking like um so i guess we'll uh we'll start with the frame um obviously like i said before um i'm not using any of the chassis or anything on this um it's going to be custom tube chassis and everything uh, for strength so um i guess the next thing is probably the wheelbase i'm not exactly sure what i'm doing as far as wheelbase um the stock wheelbase here was 65 and a half inches and what I'm leaning towards right now is sliding the axle back six inches where I have it right now. Um, I may move it up even to four, I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, I don't know if I can get the entire car in the picture. Um, let me zoom out here, there we go. It's maybe a little bit long right now, um, but if I leave it stock where it was before at 65 and a half, um, it's gonna be way too short and it's just gonna wheelie. So um, I definitely have to stretch it out, but I can't really tell with the tires being way out how they are now. So um, I'll look at that closer when I get it on the surface plate and start actually building the chassis. Um, and as far as width, same thing. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing with that yet. Um, <clears throat> that's mainly gonna be determined by what I can find for rear axle. Um, I'm not going with an ATV axle, it's not going to be strong enough. Um, not, the axle itself will be strong enough, um, but it's the, the swing arm twisting like that when you launch, that is, uh, it's not going to cut it. 
Um, so I'm still looking into a rear axle. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Um, I'm thinking about like a junior dragster rear end, but it's gonna be really, really narrow. I think maybe even too narrow. Um, so I don't know, I'm still looking around. I've checked into uh, like a mini sprint rear axle. That's a possibility, um, looking into that too. And then for the front suspension, um, I'm planning on using the front A-arms and everything off of the four-wheeler, um, a race quad like a Raptor or TRX, something like that. Um, so I think how, how I'm planning on setting it up, <clears throat> I'm gonna have the front end a little bit wider than the rear end. Um, it'll be a lot more stable that way. So as, as far as the ATV uh, front end, I didn't measure one yet. Um, but I do know it's going to be a whole lot wider than what this is now. Um, so again, that's going to be determined by what I find for a rear axle. Um, if I can only find a rear axle that's so wide, um, I may have to cut down uh, the ATV front end and get it to halfway match the rear end. So we'll see. Um, but about the average width of the cart, <clears throat> this is actually... I don't know if you can tell that or not, it kind of goes diagonal back. Um, in the front there, it's about 40 inches wide, and in the rear, it's about 44 inches wide. So it slants back, you gain about four inches there. Um, so not much is gonna change there. I'll probably use, I'm not entirely sure about the frame setup. If I'm gonna do two rails like this, if I'm gonna go out like that, I'll probably end up just running two frame rails because it'll be stronger that way. And then uh, we'll look at the front end here when I get the ATV set up and figure out how we're gonna tie into all that. So that's uh, that's pretty much it for tonight. I think I'm gonna cut off part one of the video right here. And uh, we will, in the next video, um, hopefully I'll have the surface plate and maybe some <clears throat> steel. I gotta order in a tubing bender, um, probably from Eastwood or Woodwork Fab. And uh, we should be ready to go on this stuff. So. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for part two. I will have it up as soon as I can. So peace out.